So what's going on here? Let's start over and I'll narrate. I'm hardening a small piece of O1 tool steel. O1 is readily available, fairly easy to heat treat, and it makes a great cutting edge. This is the minimal kit I use. If you try this yourself, be very mindful of the risks inherent in having an open flame, hot steel, and oil that's flammable when it's hot. Use gloves, pliers, goggles, and keep a fire extinguisher handy. I recommend doing this outdoors. O1's annealed crystal structure is called ferrite. At about 1450 degrees Fahrenheit, its critical temperature, it transforms into austenite, allowing the carbon atoms to migrate freely and find new places to be. A handy thing about austenite is, it's not magnetic, so you can check that you've reached critical temperature with a magnet, like this. We freeze the austenite into martensite by quenching in oil, peanut oil in this case, as it has a very high flash point. Other steels have other quenchants. Some use water, many use air to quench. Martensite's very hard and dense. You can feel the hardness with a file. It's too hard, in fact, so we have to draw the temper with a low temperature reheating called tempering. You have to clean the scale off the surface so you can see what's going on. Each color in that rainbow that happens when you heat steel corresponds to a temperature. For woodworking hand tools, we want to stop at the first faint hint of color, about 350 Fahrenheit. Before then, really, but the first blush of yellow will suffice. And I arrest that progress by quenching. But a quench is unnecessary if you're using a heat source such as an oven with a digital control. Again, the file tells the story. This piece will make a good knife or chisel and will likely test at about a Rockwell C58 or so. And there you have it. This is Ron Hawk. Stay safe.